Hello everyone, my name is Nate Reitman. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for the Lairdall Medical Emergency and Trauma Portfolio. I'm thrilled that you're all joining us today for our product showcase of the Simman 3G+. Before we get started, uh, I just want to run through a few housekeeping items to ensure that the time that we spend together is uh, as enjoyable as possible and that you can learn as much as possible in our short hour together. We know you may have some questions about the products and the solutions that are featured today. Uh, and we definitely encourage you to submit all those questions into the Q&A feature um, of the Zoom. We're going to do our best to answer as many of those questions as we can during our time together. Um, however, if for any reason you need to jump off um, or head to another meeting, we will distribute the recording of this event uh, shortly thereafter uh, via email. In today's session, we're going to show you what is new and improved with the latest version of the Simman 3G by covering the key differences between 3G and 3G+. Additionally, we're going to be highlighting advanced skills training options enabled by the 3G platform for advanced respiratory care training all the way through point of care critical ultrasound training. We hope that today's session helps you think a little bit about different ways to help train and prepare the next generation of healthcare providers to deal with those high emergency, high trauma scenarios that our frontline workers are encountered with on a day to day basis. Lairdall is committed to providing learners with the tools and um, solutions to help build your skills and competence uh, as, as the journey in, continues. Uh, we also want to help demonstrate uh, stronger clinical judgment and provide high quality patient care to a diverse range of patients, just as they would in a real healthcare environment. To start, uh, our product expert, Carl Rubin, will give a uh, head to toe overview of the exciting new features the 3G Plus platform has to offer. We're then going to introduce our newest solution in the ultrasound training space, which is the Lairdall Sonosim Ultrasound Solution 2.0. And finally, we don't want to close out this session without knowing what's on your mind. As we mentioned earlier, uh, we're going to try to get to as many of the questions as we can. Um, so please submit them as, as uh, they come up in your head. Now, to get started, I'm going to hand it off to Carl Rubin, the Senior Product Manager for the SimMan portfolio here at Lairdall. It will walk us through a clinical overview of the 3G Plus platform. Enjoy. Thank you very much. Uh, so we're uh, happy to announce and present our brand new edition in the, the Lardal family. So this is uh, Simman 3G Plus. Uh, there's been a long story uh, for the Simman brothers and uh, over the years, there's been uh, incremental changes and sometimes bigger releases. Uh, this is a bigger release, um, and uh, today uh, I'll go through some of the new uh, features and the new additions on, on Simen 3G+. Plus. So, uh, as before, uh, this is a, uh, a multi-purpose um, mannequin. Uh, it has uh, many of the similar capabilities, features, uh, as you know and uh, love from uh, 3G. And uh, what we think and the hope is uh, some new and uh, delightful features. So we'll go through those. Um, as before, Simman 3G Plus is designed for uh, immersive uh, and realistic training. So part of the focus for this new mannequin is to uh, uh, prepare for and adhere to uh, use of uh, clinical equipment. Uh, and I'll go more detailed into that when we get to the individual features. So uh, starting with the visual aspects, uh, what you can see um, immediately is that there's there's a brand new face on Simman 3G+. Uh, it's now made in a different type uh, skin compared to the previous one. So uh, the visual aspects and the details of the face uh, is a lot more realistic and more lifelike. Um, and uh, it gives us a couple of other advantages when it comes to kind of the touch and feel and in, in general, um, the 
the, the visual part of it. It also adds flexibility so that uh, uh, the skin uh, has a more natural movement. Some of the other benefits of the new face is that uh, uh, you can see uh, some of the details in the face where you before had the, uh, uh, the open ports for the fluid functions. Now you can barely see that there is any function or any opening at all. Uh, and um, Ivin, could you please uh, turn on some uh, fluids, some uh, sweat, for instance. So now you can see in the forehead here, there's fluids coming out. And um, can you also turn on the, the tears? So you can see now uh, tears uh, forming. So uh, we think this is a, it's a huge uh, improvement compared to, to the previous solution. Uh, we're also planning down the line to release more faces to give uh, you as a user more diversity into the mannequin. Uh, the first we will be releasing now in, in Q1 is a geriatric face. Uh, and it will also come in the three uh, previously mentioned skin tones. Um, the, um, um, uh, the other new aspect, uh, which is not only visual, is that uh, we now have uh, new ears on, on the face skin. So it's, uh, it's possible now to attach uh, a nasal cannula. And I'll, I'll demonstrate that. So you can see that uh, the ears now have uh, the possibility to attach the, the tube behind it so that you can correctly place the cannula. So this was a, an issue with the, uh, the previous version of 3G. Um, in addition to that, uh, there's some changes um, on the mouth part. So you can see that the mouth is uh, not as wide as before, so it looks more natural, but it still gives you the same possibilities and ability to do um, airway uh, management task, uh, like for instance, intubation. And I'll quickly show. So um, the, the inner airway of uh, Simman um, has the same features as before. So uh, you can still see all the nice uh, uh, details and uh, by lifting the tongue, I can now see the vocal cords and hopefully, yep, there we go. Good. Uh, so right now, for my convenience, I've added no uh, issues to do this intubation. So as you can see, it was relatively easy, but we have uh, plenty of possibilities to create a difficult uh, airway. And um, uh, as you can see on the leap screen, there are many choices where you can click on different aspects of the anatomy to inflate um, different types of uh, bladders uh, to create a advanced or less advanced airway. So a pretty good functionality there. Okay. Uh, another aspect of the, the silicon skin uh, is that the silicon gives better uh, connectivity to the silicon part of the uh, BVM. Uh, so by now it's, um, it's, it's more easy than before to get the proper seal around the, the mouth when you're doing bagging. And you can also see chest rise and that the mannequin is reacting to uh, um, the inflations. Okay, so I think that sums up the, um, uh, the face part. So uh, over to the new arms. There's a brand new set of arms on uh, Cement 3G Plus uh, with uh, several improvements. Uh, all features, functions are bilateral, meaning that you can do any procedure on either side of the mannequin. 
Uh, also, you can see there's added a lot of uh, articulation on the arm. So compared to the previous one, which was uh, stiff and not as uh, articulate, this arm can now uh, bend in the elbow. There's uh, rotation in the uh, overarm and in the shoulder joint. Uh, there's also flexibility in the wrists. Uh, so all in all, it allows for a much more uh, natural, normal uh, articulation of, of the arm. Um, you can also use it with the, an automated compression machine, like for instance, uh, the Lucas device. So now you can attach the hands on top of the device and, and kind of do the proper procedure. So those are all uh, great um, benefits. You can also see on the underside of the arm, there's uh, a zipper uh, all the way uh, at the length of the arm. Um, so that allows for easy operation of the arm if you need to uh, change any of the parts or for some reason needs to um, change the skin. Um, okay, so um, as I mentioned, there's a couple of new and improved uh, features on the arm and uh, uh, one of them is, is new pulses. Uh, we've um, created uh, new types of pulses. They are, uh, I would say, more correctly placed. So you can feel the pulse uh, on the um, forearm. And uh, there's also a, a brachial pulse added on uh, the upper arm. Um, uh, and the, the pulse is now positioned such that if you kind of rotate the arm, the pulse will still continue to be in, in the correct location. So that's also an improvement compared to the previous arm. Um, so uh, in addition to that, uh, we have uh, uh, improved and added some functionality on, uh, on the IV. Okay, so I'll uh, quickly go over to demonstrate the new IV function. And uh, so it's better for, view, for the view, uh, changing uh, the angle slightly. So as you can see on the arm, so there, there is a pre-ported site for where you introduce the IV. Um, but uh, what's different now is that this is a port where you actually can use a real needle and insert into the arm and uh, add fluids um, in, into the syringe. So you can hang up an IV drip. Um, you can also see the area around uh, the actual uh, port uh, is a bit more shiny now. And that's because I've added a patch uh, on the silicon skin to allow for uh, fastening tape. Uh, it is a, it's, a, it's an issue to, uh, to attach tape on silicon skin. And this is um, a solution to kind of counterfeit that. Um, as you can see here, when you insert the needle, you will feel resistance when you get to the underlying uh, silicon part here. And I need to push through that silicon part. And then I can draw back and continue uh, the correct placement of the needle and then attach with the uh, correct uh, tegaderm. So all in all, uh, this allows for a better simulation because of the, uh, because you now need to kind of find the right equipment. You have to do the procedure and it takes the needed time to fulfill the procedure. So while we're here, uh, just wanted to show you there's a, there's a new uh, convulsion uh, uh, in cement 3G, which has uh, some improvements. So, uh, Eivind, could you please um, turn on the convulsions, please? So now you can see a more lifelike and natural uh, movement of, of the arm. Uh, thank you. Also on the new uh, arms, there's a uh, area for um, uh, I.O and uh, I am uh, a, a generous pad here uh, where you can uh, perform multiple injections with the I am. So the sil silicon skin is such that uh, there will be no visible marks. So let me demonstrate. Um, as I mentioned, uh, this whole area, uh, you can feel the landmarks and you can kind of feel where the muscle is supposed to be. 
uh, and you can insert uh, here and you can retract and insert fluids up to uh, 10 to 15 milliliters. And then you can take out the pad, clean it, dry it or replace it and continue. Same with the IO function. Uh, if you palpate, you can feel the landmark of the humeral bone. Uh, which is drillable. So let me demonstrate. You can feel the bone underneath now. And uh, by doing that, you can also add fluids on the IO port. And uh, all the fluids, uh, both from IV, IM, and uh, the IO, is um, escaping the mannequin in the ports under the arm here. So those can be uh, attached to a drain bag where you can collect the fluids. So uh, just going to mention while we're here, as I said, the zipper, the whole length of the arm, uh, I will open it now so you can see the underlying part for the shoulder pad. So if I take this aside, you can see this foam pad, which is the IM area. So this can be taken out. And under the foam pad, you can see the IO bone. This one can also be taken out. And you can now see the one hole from <laughs> where I drilled. So uh, if you're going to do this as a wet procedure, uh, you need a new bone each time you're uh, using fluids or you can repair the existing bone, which is very easy. It's just one drop of normal super glue uh, and it's repaired. So you can use the bone multiple times, but it is of course important that you don't add fluids into the arm without the proper um, uh, spare parts. And it's uh, easy to assemble and put the pieces uh, back in its, its place. So attaching the IO bone, uh, pushing in the foam for the IM pad, like that, and uh, ensuring that the proper uh, connections are on the underside of the silicon skin, and then close the zipper. Uh, so while on the subject of penetrating the skin, um, there's, uh, there's capped and uh, slightly improved the neck band uh, and uh, obviously under the neck band you have the ability to do uh, tracheostomy as as a feature we've uh, had before okay um, so there's two additional new features on the arms that we are uh, very pleased with so that's the uh, SpO2 function and uh, the non-invasive blood pressure, so it's automated. Again, this feature is on both arms, so uh, I'm going to turn on uh, my clinical monitor. Uh, and uh, without any other attachments or any other equipment, you use a standard SpO2 probe attach on the finger of the mannequin and you can see there's a small window on each uh, index finger um, that has a signal that is um, received by the probe and detected as a, a normal like a, a patient uh, signal so i will attach the spo2 probe on the finger like that and uh, so uh, you can uh, immediately see that there's a plat curve uh, appearing on the monitor and uh, now the SpO2 is measured to 97. So the, the, the patient is running in a, in a healthy mode, uh, a start state. Um, so uh, as I mentioned, uh, SpO2 and non-invasive blood pressure. So there's a new functionality on, on the arm to measure and you can use automated blood pressure. Just gonna silence this one. Uh, 
you're using a uh, a standard uh, clinical uh, BP cuff, but there is one modification uh, to a standard cuff. So this one is included in the accessories of the simulator, and the only difference from a standard clinical cuff is this uh, additional tube. Uh, so uh, this tube goes into a port on the inside of the arm of the simulator. Uh, except that tube, everything is run like you would do in any clinical uh, situation. So I'm attaching this tube, and then I'm placing the uh, cuff on the arm. Like this. And uh, as you can see on the leap screen now, the vital signs of the patient is set to uh, blood pressure uh, 120 over 80. Uh, so I'll use the clinical uh, monitor to check that this is correct. So I'll, I'll run a blood pressure here. Uh, so now there's technology in the arm that kind of tells the monitor what the BP is set to. And uh, within LEAP, uh, all these parameters, all the vital signs can be changed uh, and detected by uh, the monitor. Um, so this is a, a, it's a big improvement and a neat change compared to the old arms. Uh, there will also be a possibility, of course, to interchange the arms. So if needed, if you want to use the drug recognition system, or if you want to do manual blood pressure through Kortokov sounds, it is possible to attach the old arms on Cement 3G+. So you can have both functionalities. So looking at the monitor now, you can see that it has detected the blood pressure of the patient to be 119 over 83. So that's uh, very close to uh, what the vital signs are set to. So uh, uh, a nice feature there. So let me just uh, remove uh, these ones. And uh, we're going to talk uh, about the new uh, torso skin. So there is a, um, let me just turn this off. There's a new torso skin on Simen 3G+, but it's still in the same material as before. What's new is the, uh, the live shock studs. So you can see these two gold discs on the mannequin. Uh, live shock meaning that you can use any type defibrillator, pads or paddles uh, to deliver a real shock to the patient. Uh, so that would be uh, using your normal crash cart and uh, uh, do your simulations with that. Um, uh, ECG can be detected through these pads, so you can do cardioversion uh, and pacing. And by attaching the pads, you can read the rhythm of, of the, uh, the patient. So let me just uh, attach pads to demonstrate. I'll uh, switch on my uh, defibrillator. I'll uh, place the pads and uh, making sure that you have good uh, conductivity on the uh, pad itself. Like that. So by switching on the um, uh, AED then, uh, you can see a rhythm on the screen. Uh, it will detect the shock. So now uh, Avin will uh, put the patient into a cardiac arrest. So you'll see a asystole. And uh, when I deliver the shock like this, you can now see in leap that the heart frequency or the, the rhythm is back to normal. So that's how you use that system. Um, and it's, it's nice to have the ability to use a real clinical system. 
There's also a possibility to downgrade to the standard skin if you prefer to use training equipment to do defibrillation scenarios. So both options are possible. Okay, I'm going to remove this. So uh, uh, LEAP is uh, obviously done in, in connection with uh, uh, the network and uh, we have now a, a new networking solution on Siemens 3G+. We have replaced the, uh, the white router, which uh, previously has been an internal part of uh, Siemens. Um, the router is replaced with a Wi-Fi dongle and that gives us some additional benefits. Uh, it has a more modern architecture, so it adheres to new protocols uh, and a more stable communication. Um, in addition, um, the, the white router uh, creates its own ad hoc network, uh, which for some customers um, has been a, a security concern. Uh, so this one is now removed and, uh, as I mentioned, replaced by the Wi-Fi dongle. The Wi-Fi dongle operates as such that the mannequin becomes an access point, so uh, it will connect to a existing uh, network in your environment, uh, like any other device that you're uh, using. Uh, this gives additional benefits so that the mannequin can be online all the time. You can receive updates uh, and uh, you will uh, experience a more stable connectivity to your network. Um, and it doesn't take away the ability and option to continue to use a router solution. So it is possible to purchase a, um, a Lardal router that you can have on the outside of the mannequin and connect the mannequin to this router. And this router can be a, a stationary router if you are doing in-house simulation or it can be a operated router if you need to do or want to do simulation outside of your premises or in situ. Uh, so um, in, in totality, a more flexible, more reliable and more modern uh, solution for connectivity. So that concludes the practical demonstration of uh, Siemens 3G+. Excellent. Well, I always learn a lot hearing from Carl Rubin, so thanks again for that wonderful overview. I hope you all learned a lot as well getting the overview and getting a peek into the key updates with this new technology that we offer with SimMan 3G+. Hopefully the idea wheels are starting to turn and maybe you're starting to think of some ways you can train your learners on this advanced patient simulator. One of the key benefits of the SimMan platform is its ability to expand the training capabilities depending on your specific learning needs. We have further solutions for advanced respiratory care training, um, the ability to utilize real clinical devices, and even perform point of care ultrasound training. What I'd like to do now is to introduce everyone to Danny Bielitz, our Director of Business Development, who's going to walk us through an update to an exciting new uh, product in our portfolio, the Laird Alsanosim Ultrasound Solution, or LSUS 2.0. Turn it over to Danny. Hi, I'm Danny, and I'm really looking forward to introducing you to our new Laidel Sonosim Ultrasound Solution 2.0 product. This new product is actually an extension of our current Laidel Sonosim Ultrasound Solution product, but I guess one of the key differences is we've actually introduced new flexibility and also taken the opportunity to introduce a new interface as well. It was developed in partnership with Sonosim, who are recognised world leaders in ultrasound training and education. And what we've done is taken their unique technology, which is the use of real life ultrasound images and implemented that into our simulations. So then that way you have the ability to introduce point of care ultrasound as a part of your simulation. Okay, so let's have a look at the room setup. So we have a Simman 3G Plus simulator. He's been connected to and driven by the Leap software on this particular PC. We have another PC that has the Laidel Sinusim Ultrasound Solution 2.0 software um, loaded on it. Connected to that um, is the probe. And what we've done just for the purpose of this particular demonstration is we've actually mirrored that particular image onto the screen behind me. 
I appreciate that the, the image probably won't be that clear um, during this particular webinar, but what we'll do is when we actually go and actually manipulate the heart rate and respiratory rate, we'll actually take close-ups of the screen so you'll be able to see those. So, so again, just to explain, I, I guess, the basics of the, of the Laidel Sinosim ultrasound solution concept. So underneath the skin, we have um, tags that are located that actually tell the probe uh, what images um, to load. So as an example, if we have a look at um, the patient's right chest, so if I scan the right chest, we'll see that we uh, pick up the right lung that's there and we can sort of see the sliding. And of course I can go across to the patient's left lung and again acquire the image and, and see it there. And if we were to take a look at the subcostal, we can just manipulate the image there and there we can pick up a good view of, of the actual heart. And of course with a trauma scenario, because it's based on eFAST, we have the ability to scan the left and right chest, subcostal, suprapubic and also the left and right upper quadrant. So now let, let, let's have a look at how we can actually manipulate both the heart rate and the respiratory rate. So to do that, we actually make the changes on the LEAP PC. So if we come across now onto the LEAP PC and currently the heart rate is running at 76. So if I click on that um, numerical value, that will bring up the window that I'm, I'll be able to change the heart rate. If I now slide that up to 180, and if we set that to trend over a period of 40 seconds, and then select OK, we can see on the interface that we now have that trend running. If I come back with the ultrasound probe and then acquire the image of the heart, what we'll be able to see is actually that heart rate increase up to 180 that's set on LEAP. So you can see there um, that the heart rate's getting quite a lot faster now. And then just as an example, just to show you, so that was sort of going from 76 to 180. Let's now do another example where we're going to slow the heart rate down. So we'll click on the heart rate. Again, we'll slow it down to around 20 beats per minute. We'll set that again to run over about 40 seconds and then select OK. And then if we acquire the image again of the heart, this time what we'll see is we'll see the image go from a fast heart rate down to the 20 that we have selected. OK. So now let's just have an example of the respiratory rate. So the respiratory rate, obviously we'll see sliding. Um, so now if I acquire the image, we can see we have a heart rate, sorry, a respiratory rate set of 20. So now if I go to the LEAP interface again, and I select that numerical value, and let's take that up to around 60, and let's do that again, this time we'll do it over 20 seconds and select OK. Now when we acquire the image, we'll be able to see the lung sliding there, go from a rate of 20 up to 60 over the selected period of time. OK. Now let's take the respiratory rate again, we'll select it and this time we'll go from the rate of 60 down to around 10. We'll do that again over 20 seconds. We'll select OK. Once again, I'll acquire the image and we'll be able to see the lung sliding there start to slow down to the rate that we have set over the period of time. You'll notice when you look at the ultrasound screen, um, the, of, as far as the new interface, we still have the normal um, features that you, you would expect from an ultrasound machine where you can control the depth, the gain, Doppler. We have the ability to flip and also freeze the image. We can also review. So one of the unique features about the ultrasound product is it is it, it, it is a training um, product as well. So we can select review and we'll actually get an instructor pop up that will actually tell us exactly what we're seeing 
So not only can it be used as a product within a simulation, it can also be used to teach about the, how, how to actually acquire the image and also what it is that we're actually seeing. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Danny, for giving us such a robust overview of the Laird Alsanasim Ultrasound Solution 2.0. Uh, we did have a few questions come in while you're going through that. So if we don't mind just kind of doubling back, I think these are a couple um, really poignant ones to help us out here. So uh, the first question is, uh, what is the biggest difference between the previous version of Laird Alsanasim Ultrasound Solution and LSUS 2.0? So I guess... Um... The biggest differences between um, LSUS and LSUS 2.0 um, is really around an enhanced user experience. Um, and I guess that experience, I guess, allows you to more closely approximate scanning um, or use of a real life ultrasound machine. I think the second part is that ability to create the on the fly scenario. So that flexibility, which will probably allow, you know, ultrasound to better fit the educational goals. Um, of our end users. So, so that would be the main things. It would certainly be the new interface and, and also that increased flexibility of being able to control the heart rate and also the respiratory rate. All right, thanks so much, Danny, for answering that one for us. Uh, another question that just came in, uh, besides the new interface, where do you think users will find the most benefit in using LSUS 2.0? So for the learners, I guess the, the actual opportunity that it presents is really about introducing point of care ultrasound as a part of their decision making process when we're actually running a simulation. So, so when they're involved, if it's a trauma patient, as an example, they can actually take an eFAST assessment um, and have a look at the left and right chest and also the heart and the upper and right quadrants look for blood. And of course, that might change or confirm um, their particular treatment pathway. So I think having real pathology within the actual simulation, so when they actually scan the case, they can see it. And of course, you know, that flexibility that the operator has to be able to change the heart rate and respiratory rate could certainly make for a dynamic um, experience for the participant, but also improve patient outcomes as well. Excellent, thanks so much for that answer. Uh, the last question we have before we'll let you go, uh, what happens to existing LSUS customers should they choose not to upgrade to the 2.0 version? So if a customer decides not to um, upgrade to the new 2.0, they'll still have exactly the same capabilities um, that they have today on their current product. Um, the only thing that they won't have is the new interface um, or that flexibility in regards to being able to control both the heart rate and also respiratory rate. Wonderful. Thanks so much to Danny for giving us that great overview of the LSUS 2.0. One other thing I wanted to get to before the Q&A section is just a quick overview of the interchangeable face skins that have been discussed throughout this presentation. Uh, we're really excited to uh, roll out the first interchangeable face skin for this simulator, which are the geriatric face skins. Um, we have three skin tones um, to match each of the different skin tones offered with SimMan 3G+, light, medium, and dark. And those uh, are easily taken off in just about two minutes and swapped onto the existing simulator. This is a great benefit, we hope, for your programs um, to have one simulator that can easily have different accessories to quickly change the look and presentation of the core simulator. At a glance, you can have a mannequin that resembles a geriatric patient enabling heightened diversity training in your programs. Now, at this point, we're gonna go ahead and turn it over to the Q&A section. I wanna introduce Meg Miller, who is uh, one of our lead uh, educational specialists with Lairdall, and she's gonna be helping us out with some of your clinical questions. To start, uh, we had a couple of questions come in regarding the network connectivity solutions with SimMan 3G+. So just to kind of recap that a little bit, um, the internal router that used to come with the SimMan lineup now comes with a Wi-Fi dongle. So that Wi-Fi dongle no longer, um, it, it actually can uh, create, it doesn't create the network, but it becomes an access point instead. So what this does is it allows a stable connection to an enterprise network. You can still hardwire the SimMan 3G Plus um, to a network, and you can still use an external router um, say you're doing in situ trainings, uh, you could still have that as well. And we offer a router for that as well. Uh, our network services team is uh, always available to discuss any of these solutions and help you set up your SimLab for the best success possible. 
Um, we're going to be dropping a link to that in the chat if you would like to view the network services page and get connected with that team. One of the other uh, questions we had come up, a uh, few of them actually, regarding the uh, interchangeable face skins. So I gave a brief highlight of the geriatric face skins. Um, one of the things we did not mention is that the uh, person who actually designs these face skins for this simulator used to work on the Game of Thrones set. Uh, if you follow us along on social media, you may have seen a story about that come across as well. But we want to turn it over to you all um, to help us figure out what is the next set of face skins that we'd like to hear about. So uh, any feedback is always more than welcome on that. Additionally, on the face skin, I saw we had a couple of questions on changing it out or if it's a true face skin or an overlay. So this is a true face skin. And what I mean by that is that we have fluid connections in here in the forehead and in the eyes as well. So if it was an overlay, you wouldn't get some of those fluid functions that you get with the with the true face skin that is offered with 3G+. We saw some other questions come across. Um, is this available for other parts of the simulator, other 3G lineup? Um, this is exclusive to the 3G Plus only. Okay. Uh, let's see. One other question that we had come in, Meg, maybe you could uh, help us with this, is um, how does mechanical ventilation training work with the SIM and 3G Plus? Well, one nice feature of the 3G series is they can be uh, used with the ASL 5000, which is really made for uh, training with ventilators and, um, you know, you can change anybody from respiratory therapists to people in the OR. And um, during COVID, a lot of hospitals were training uh, RN staff and other people to recognize ventilator emergencies. It actually replaces the lung function in the mannequin while you're using it so that uh, using uh, you know, the ASL 5000 technology, you'll actually be able to emulate the different kinds of, uh, the different kinds of things that a, a uh, person would do if they were having a respiratory emergency. Excellent. Thank you. Sure. Um, one of the other questions that came in, we had a couple of different ones come in around the arms and some of the feature sets um, on each of them. So um, Meg, do you want to just walk us through kind of how the arms work and what's new? Yeah, so one thing I saw in the chat also was asking about the blood pressure cuff. The blood pressure cuff can be connected directly to the defibrillator um, where you're, or the machinery that you're using already. So if you already have a monitor that uses an automatic cuff, it can be used with that. Uh, one of the people asked if you could use it with, um, you know, a uh, blood pressure with a nursing student who wanted to take manual blood pressure. The arms on the 3G Plus aren't made to do that specifically, but we offer an option that you can get an arm that can be retrofitted to it and you can use it for that. Yeah, and that's actually one of the great things about having the 3G Plus in the family now is that um, the 3G arms um, from the previous generation 3G, they do fit onto the 3G. So if, you know, we've, we've had a couple of other people say, well, what about, you know, the drug recognition features? You can still use that um, as long as you use the 3G arms. So same with the blood pressure as well. You can also cannulate the arm uh, using uh, whatever appropriate uh, syringe that you would use for a person. Um, and what will happen is you can once you cannulate it, you can attach a saline lock and use it to administer medications. It still drains out the back of the arm, so um, you can catch it in a bag, an IV bag or something. Excellent. Thank you. Um, let's see. We had a couple of other questions come in. Um, oh, here's a great one. Uh, how many IOs can be done before the skin needs to be replaced? Well, I mean, that's a great question. and. Um, people usually say that just before they say, I'm not positive of the answer for that. And we can certainly see if we've done any research on the number of IOs. But the IOs on the tibia that we had on our regular Simman 3G could take quite a few before it had to be replaced. So I would say um, you'd have to really look at your own experience with it. And we would be happy to research that for you and get back to you. 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, another question that came in is uh, regarding patient monitors. So what patient monitors are compatible with the Simman 3G Plus? Well, pretty much any all-in-one monitor that we've had in the past for our Simman series or our other mannequins will work. That They're fantastic. But you can also, if you have the Vitals Bridge, use your regular OR monitor or your regular med surge monitor right on the floor and uh, use that to run uh, simulations with the mannequins. So either way, you can use them. Yeah, and we're proud to partner with Dynesthetics on the Vitals Bridge product as well. So that's um, with there. We have a couple of different versions and cable sets, but pretty much any of your clinical monitors. Yeah, it goes right up to it. Yeah. Excellent. OK, let's see. What else did we have come up? Um, Oh, here's a good one. Is there a range on the Wi-Fi dongle? So I can take that one, actually. When they did the testing on these new Wi-Fi dongles, um, just to kind of double back on that network services piece that we talked about, they, as we know, a lot of sim labs um, can be in basements or through multiple walls. Um, so is it going to connect necessarily to a Wi-Fi that's in a different room? Uh, we did test a lot of those different scenarios. I don't have a specific range for you, but uh, we did do a lot of testing through very thick walls and multiple rooms across a, a large sim lab. So the, the connectivity we found to be much better and much more stable than that internal router. And one of the questions was involved with routers. So if somebody is used to using an external router, you answered that you can still use your external router with the mannequin. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, we also had a couple of questions come in regarding the live shock discs. So the live shock discs are in the uh, anatomically correct positions in the anterolateral placement. Uh, Meg, do you want to walk us through training with live shock and how that's a little bit maybe different than what some people are used to? Yeah, so normally you would uh, be putting pads on that were training pads and had no live, uh, you know, shock going through them. But be, with live shock, if you put them over the discs, uh, then there is a mechanism inside the mannequin that will take that shock and ground it out. So there's not going to be a electrical uh, shock risk to your students. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, another question that came in is regarding the calibration process for the SPO2 finger and the NIBP. So as we kind of went over, um, you can use um, real clinical monitors or, or, or defibs for the uh, measurement of both of those. And we actually have a drop down menu in the LEAP software um, that one of our client executives would be more than happy to show you um, in person. But there's a drop down and it'll basically go through all the major brands and you just select the one that is closest to yours. Uh, and the calibration process has already been done. So it's a simple click, plug and play, and you'll have your um, vitals displayed on that monitor. Okay, um, let's see. Female appearing faces. Ah, that's a great question. Yeah, thank you for that feedback. Um, as, as we continue to develop the face skins, um, we're definitely gonna keep female uh, face skins in mind. That's a great point, thank you. And there definitely is pupillary response to light that's we've kept that it's a very popular feature absolutely um, one other question a couple questions on the ultrasound um, so uh, it looks like someone said can we change the cardiac ultrasound pathology um, so in the sonosim um, software there are multiple different case sets so we have critical care and cardiac care and trauma care and in the cardiac care section as of right now we have 10 different scenarios um, that go with that ultrasound software there. Um, we are always looking to develop more. And if there's specific pathologies that you all uh, would like to see, let us know and we're more than happy to work with you on that as well. Definitely. And now with the ultrasound, you may have heard that the uh, you know heart rate and respiratory rate will coincide with the uh, LEAP software. So they will look like they're coming from that patient. Excellent. Um, let's see, the next question that we have coming in, can the 3G Plus do chest tubes? Meg, do you want to take that one? <laughs> well, um, the 3G could take test tu chest tubes and in the side of the mannequin, we have this chest tube module. It's identical to the one that came with the uh, regular 3G. So, um, and it can be used in the exact same way. So yes, the answer is yes. 
excellent. Thank you. Um, I see one other question on ultrasound. Um, is it currently compatible with nursing and simulator? Um, not at the moment, no, it is not compatible with nursing and simulator. Our ultrasound capabilities um, right now with the lineup are with the SimMan platform. So SimMan ALS, Essential, Essential Bleeding, Trauma, all the SimMan brothers um, are ultrasound capable and ready. Um, and the SimMom platform is the other one that comes with that. And you can do ultrasound training um, on late stage and early stage pregnancy cases with SimMom as well. Okay, I see one other one. Is there any way to enlarge the prostate for practicing Foley placements? Um, that's a new one I haven't heard before. Um, that's a great uh, point of feedback we'll take back. Um, I believe the answer to that is no at the moment, uh, unfortunately. That is correct. Okay, let me see. So uh, another question about the interchangeable face skins. Great question here. Um, they mentioned that there were three different skin tones for the interchangeable face skins. Does that mean the whole body of 3G Plus comes in three skin tones? Mm. Yes. So the current setup is that you can either order light, medium, or dark for your 3G Plus. And those interchangeable face skins, the geriatric ones, um, also are applicable in those uh, matching skin tones as well. All right, another question comes up on live shock. Since we are shocking with real live pads, does the simulator need to be grounded to discharge, or is there a built-in system that discharges the current? I believe you answered that one, but if you want to just rehash it's it for us. built into the system. Um, it grounds right into the mannequin, and you don't need to do a separate grounding of the mannequin. Excellent. Let's see. Any other questions come up here? Oh, uh, Meg, do you mind walking us through the benefits of the silicone skin and how that can help with training? Yes, definitely. So anybody who's um, had, you know, one of the older generation mannequins has known that, you know, if you use a pen or anything near the mannequin, uh, it seems to be a magnet for that type of, you know, um, pinpoint stains and that kind of thing. So this silicon skin is very forgiving. If, I mean, I don't recommend writing on it, but if it does accidentally get some sort of a um, mark on it from a pen or something like that, you can rub it off. Uh, you can actually even rub it off just with your finger. They're very cleanable. The other thing is, is when you are, um, inserting a needle as you would uh, when you went to put in an IO into the mannequin's humerus, uh, it actually kind of sort of comes in on itself. So it's very forgiving in that way too. You won't get a, a million little holes in it that are obvious to the students. Um, and uh, the one thing uh, uh, as far as adhesives go, uh, some of the adhesives uh, if they don't stick well, uh, we actually ship them with a uh, double-sided tape that causes it to stick to the skin. Thanks, Meg. And yeah, uh, the, the silicone parts of this simulator are the face, where you would uh, you know, likely see a lot of that moulage and the arms. So those are the two places that we've added silicone to just improve that patient handling um, as well. Um, we have a question on battery life. Um, is the battery life improved on 3G Plus or is it the same as 3G? Um, I don't know that anything has changed with the battery specifically, but one factor to note is that without that internal router being powered, um, that may lead to some improvements as well. True. Um, I think we had one other question. Let me go back up and see that. Uh, it was regarding something that I missed. Um, let me keep looking here one second. But please keep the questions coming in. We're more than happy to see all the excitement around this. Um, is there a way to project the heart sounds so that others in the room can hear it as well? That's a great question. Yeah, it's a wonderful question. It's not, not available with just the Simman 3G Plus, but there are products available um, which you can research on the internet. Uh, that will amplify the sound coming out of his chest the same way it would if it was a human being. Uh, the one thing that I'll say is the auscultation focus uh, feature is fantastic. Uh, it will cause the chest to uh, stop rising so you won't get the mannequin noise, if you, uh, if you will. And you can hear the pure lung and heart sounds if you use that type of device. Wonderful. Thanks, Meg. 
another question that came in was regarding the convulsions. So uh, the convulsions on 3G Plus are actually improved a good bit to look more realistic. So that is a new feature to the 3G Plus line um, as opposed to the 3G line. Uh, one other question I see came in. All right, uh, can you check the distal pulses to the lower body? And are there any wounds that can be added? We have a double question there. So yeah, SimM 3G Plus has um, some of the most extensive pulse points of any simulator in our lineup. So we have pulses all the way up from the carotid, the whole way down through the, the dorsalis pedis pulses. Um, you even have the popliteal pulses in the back of the leg, um, radial pulses, brachial pulses, femoral pulses. Am I missing one here, Meg? No, I think you pretty <laughs> much hit them all. <laughs> Great. Um, and the second question about wounds. Um, so yeah, Simon 3G Plus um, can bleed and bleed uh, either in an arterial or venous fashion. Um, we do have smaller wound modules that can be attached and added on to different parts of the skin. Um, we also have trauma limbs. So we have trauma limbs in the arms and the legs um, that are either amputations or gunshot wounds, and they get a little, little realistic and graphic at points, but uh, we, we like to heighten the realism of those sims as well. Yes, we do. All right, another question I see. Um, one layer painted tegaderm for moulage. Will there be an issue with it sticking to the skin? Uh, well, the one nice thing about the silicon skin is it is realistic, but it also um, doesn't uh, have too much stickiness to it. So if you do have any kind of an adhesive, it won't stick as much. The uh, other side of that is you will have to use sometimes a uh, double-sided uh, gel that we sell with him to stick certain types of moulage onto him. Excellent. Thanks so much, Meg. And wow, I can't believe it. Um, it looks like our time together is coming to a close here. So I want to thank you all so much for taking the time to join us today. Thank you so much for your questions and for your feedback. We really appreciate it. And we want to keep that conversation going. So please keep us in the loop. Feel free to reach out to us or your local client executive as well. I also wanted to thank Carl Rubin, Danny, and Meg in particular um, for her knowledge and help with our presentation today. Um, to close out, I just kind of want to, you know, take us all back and think about how important critical care training is and advanced training on critical care uh, procedures and practices. Um, we, we really hope that when you think about that, you think of the training solutions in uh, respiratory, ultrasound, or other critical care fields that um, might come into play there as well. We hope that when you think about that, you turn to SimMan 3G Plus to help answer that call or to layer it all as a whole, and we're happy to work with you to determine what solutions work best. Uh, you will receive a recording of this email, or of this um, presentation rather, uh, via email in the coming days. Um, additionally, if we were not able to answer your questions live today, we'll work with you to get those questions answered. If you're interested in learning more about any of the products that we covered today, uh, you can visit the URLs that are gonna be dropped in the chat. With that, I hope everyone has a wonderful day, and thanks again for joining us here.